Rob, what's up, man? How you doing, my man? All right, I'm good, I'm good. So when I tell everybody, because I know immediately they probably looked you up <laughs> and they saw Ballin doesn't have 50 million <laughs> followers itself, they probably don't understand uh, what that is. So when you, we say Ballin has 50 million or you have 50 million followers, yeah. what does that mean? So what it means is, what we call generic accounts. And those aren't like person accounts, like, you know, Damon John or Jake Pauls or something like that. We call them generic accounts. So they'd be something like we own at style. That's a generic account um, at girls. That's a generic account. So we just base the following what we post on there to whatever that thing so at style is obviously fashion brands. So Myself personally, I think I have 9,000 followers, but generic accounts such as style, girls, stuff like that, 50 million total. How do you get those names though? Those names are very, very powerful names. And, and, how many, how, and how important is it to get that name? Girls, boys, workout king, workout queen, whatever the case is, yeah. chef, excellent chef. Uh, like, I, I, how do you do that, you know? Yeah, you know, it's, <clears throat> Again, it's starting early and knowing the people in social media. You know, I've been on uh, social media for about 10 years now. So me, my buddy, Brandon, my buddy, you know, Brandon, Chris, um, we got in about 10 years ago and we got these OG names, you know, started in Twitter. And then, so it's knowing the right people, you know, what we call them is OG names is because it's really hard to get the name at Ballin. And I have it on right. Twitter. I have it on TikTok. You know, it's really hard to get at style. I have it on Instagram, I have it on TikTok. So once you're in the game for so long, you know where to go to get these OG names. Just like, you know, yourself, if you were building another FUBU, you know exactly where to go to get shirts. All right, that's true. Now, what about the, not the OG names, the new names that are coming up, at social distancing? You know, at wear your mask, you know, at yeah. all those things. That, so now after I just said that, I'm sure everybody on here is looking up every single name that they can think about. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's, it doesn't have to be only OG names. Uh, no. All right. So so also, let me ask some. You've been sending me some amazing things. Hassle food, hassle stuff, the, the, the beef or that thing that cooks. I have to, I'm getting my outdoor kitchen together. The trader, yeah. like, you got to stop sending me all these grilling things because they're going to need the jaws of life to take me out of my house in a minute because I'm going to be cooking so much. But, hey, that's um, what we talked about. I gained the COVID-19, man. Woo! That's what you call gain the COVID-19, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So, so I want to get right into it so people here can take away some information from you and learn from you. So why don't we, why don't we get into some, some things on what are some simple tips you can give people right now on building their own account or if they want to get behind – I don't call that a phantom account, the kind of accounts you have. But yeah, let's talk about building their, their building their own account. Yeah, the generic accounts. So, you know, one of the things is, is pretty simple. I think people should start building themselves first. I think we're in a time that we're, um, you should start building up your own community, which will help you build up your brand. So let's say, uh, you know, D from 5-4. Yeah. You know, he's, he did that exact same thing. He kind of saw... And this is where I kind of, you know, started thinking about it, too, is he was building a brand, but there was nobody behind it, right, as where people can believe into it. So, you know, it took D a couple years to, to be start building this 5-4 New Republic Grand AC where he's, you know, with the community. So I think one of the tips is start building yourself, you know, start building, uh, you know, what you believe in. So if I'm going to start. You know, say I'm, I'm going to build a fashion brand. I'm going to start basically building myself on looking at material. If on my Instagram, looking at material, looking at places I go for inspiration, um, looking at different colors, looking at different, you know, but also showcase that on Instagram stories, on Twitter, on LinkedIn. You know, there's so many platforms to where you can start building things. So well, also, well, we know, hold on, Rob, but we know that it can be a pain um, in the ass to, um, you know, especially for a female, because females, obviously, it depends on how they're going after their brand. But, you know, they want to be made up nice. They want to they want to look a certain way and they don't want to look, you know, crazy. So, you know, before they have to take the put the camera on them and, you know, they want to make sure the shot is right for various reasons. And I get it. Right. Yep. Or, do they always have to be in camera themselves or maybe is the point of view of the material they're looking at just over their shoulder, right? And yes. so, because I don't want the people to be too literal and go, hey, man, I just, 
even though I think it's important, everybody's brand is positioned a different way. You don't have to physically be there right. in, you know, with you on there, you talking politics, you doing this. How can you do it from a, from a, a way where it's not tedious, where you're only getting one piece of content out every two days? Because you know what? You're living right now at home and you, you're looking like shit and you don't feel like, you know, looking at the camera every day. Yeah, for sure. And of course, I mean, I have a, uh, I have a face for radio. You and I talk about this all the time, right? So it's like, you have to think of creative ways to put yourself out there. So again, you could do as a point of view. I do basically, you know, I manage 85 athletes. I don't have to put photos of me and my athletes all the time. But what I can do is highlight my athlete, is I can highlight one of their games, is I can highlight one of this. So when people come to my page, they go, oh, this guy must do something in sports without my face everywhere. Um, what about user generated? What about other content too? Because what I like to do sometimes, like you know, on a Sunday, on a Saturday, and Sunday, I don't want to talk politics. Not politics. I don't want to talk business. Everything else, because I think that people sometimes need to just say, okay, I'm going to Damon's page. I want to see other aspects of his life, and I'll put up my daughter, or I'll put up, you know, getting ready for the week ahead, or I'll just put up the lake. Take time for yourself. You know what I mean? Um, what about using? Or I'll put up a funny video that I saw of an animal doing something very smart and what my right. team what my team realized about when we because i love animals what my team realized about animals is when i put out a post of saying look how cute or look how smart this animal is that's fine and i've shared this many times but if i change the wording to go if this animal can figure it out you know what i mean where yeah. are you your where are you your life and you're going to figure it out that's yeah. what entrepreneurs do yeah. Uh, and one time I had two horses. I remember they were kicking each other. They were having a yeah. horse fight, literally a horse fight. They were kicking each other. And I just wrote, when me and my partners were pitching food, well, this, is how we, this is how we would be before we went into the room to pitch. Yeah. And people really resonated with that. So how can people take, you say, they say, okay, I'm going to put myself on camera 25% of the time. I'm going to put over the shoulder or something 25% of the time. I'm going to put great article 25% of the time and other content from other places. Should they come up with schedules like that so they can just start getting into a rhythm? I mean, yeah, what do you so think? I guess, you know, that's a great question. So again, you have to be personable, right? So don't always think about, uh, you know, I have to post about my clothes. I, I have to post about my brand. I have, you know, also do personal stuff like you were just saying is that animal so cute. That's personable because the reason being is I might walk down the street and see two horses too and be like, wow, Damon's a normal person, right? So using your human things you do in human life, like cooking or something, be like, uh, you know, show yourself cooking doesn't always have to be about your brand. I think the more you connect on a personal level, it doesn't matter if you have 15 million followers or 500 followers, you'd rather have those 500 followers that give a shit than the 15 million that don't. So my thing is you have to start somewhere. Don't always look for the likes. You know, that obviously people would, you know, this was a year ago, or whatever. People still do it now. They post some, they don't get enough likes, they take it down. Fuck that. Five people liked it. So five people are enjoying what you're putting out. Got it. So when you work with companies like Casper, uh, the mattress company, and yeah. Beats by Dre, what, what, what do you mean you work with them? Like, in what capacity? What happens there? Yeah, so what would happen is, I would get their mattresses or, or their headphones and place them organically with the brand, with a, with an athlete. So I never want anything to look like an ad and I will never put anything in somebody's hands that they don't like. So obviously with the athletes, it was great to put Beats by Dre in their ear. So we would have them basically have it in their ear and then them walking out to practice like that, you know, super organic, you know, practice time. Today's the day we go with pads. Um, off week, but still getting my workout in. Everything's organic. When you start seeing stuff that, you know, customers now or people now have already seen what's an ad and what's not an ad. And the way I create them, the way, you know, my partners create them, the way a lot of people create them, you can create them where it doesn't look like an ad, but still gets in people's minds. And that's, that's the best way. So with Casper, We'd send beds out and we'd literally have the athletes sitting, laying on the bed and saying, you know, just got done with practice and just tag at Casper. Once you do that simple thing, people are wondering what the hell is Casper? 
Is it the bed? Is it the sheet? Is it the pillow? Is it the wall? Is it the shoes? Let me hit that tag. Oh, it's a bed that gets shipped to my house. Let me ask you something. So, so we all noticed that somebody said some racial slurs or whatever it was on here. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm curious because you'll have a lot of those type of people on in, in any, you know, doing, doing type of stuff, whether it's they're talking politics or they're talking about really nasty things. Yeah. Because you work behind the scenes with people, uh, you know, um, with the Instagrams of the world, what would the average person here do on their site or on their thing if they start seeing a lot of negative comments? Do they block them or do they report them? And how, if they report them enough, how much, how many people, like if everybody right now reported that person, would that person's account be frozen? Yeah, yeah, it would actually, it would it'd go away. Because you could basically say on there, when you report somebody, they were threatening. But here's my take on it. And, you know, this goes with a grain of salt, you know, people yeah. take it or not. We're in a time right now where you don't have to give a shit about what that dude says, right? It's, it's what you think and what, you know, you're willing to do. My suggestion is you don't reply to it. You just block them. See ya. You can, yeah. never, you can never say anything on my thing again. I don't even know who you are. Because here's the thing is, if we spend so much time on that, are you spending any time getting better? No. No, 100%. 100 no, but what I'm saying is you want to take one action so that that person doesn't yeah. take away everybody else's from, you know, from paying attention. I, I, I actually love, you know, unless they're saying something disrespectful, I don't get offended by it, but other people may. And under, other people who may, you know, value me or value say, oh, why are you saying that? I have no problem with that. I actually love when people do that because, um, you know, over the course of my life, whenever I found haters or people who do that stuff, I found that when they're spending so much time thinking about you, like you said, they're not doing anything to get their, their selves, their, you know, go anywhere in life. But what you do is you just keep passing people like that in life. Right. I've passed, I've passed thousands, maybe millions of people like that in life. And, um, uh, you know, it, it's funny. And I, and I watched them spend their time majoring in minor and minor was, you know, they, they were spending majority of their time on minor things, such as trying to piss people off and get attention and things of that nature. I just want to know what was the, what was the easiest way to yeah. address it? Because if they always got to set up a new account yeah. every time everybody blocks them, then sooner or later, before they can even say anything, they're just setting up more accounts. And maybe once in a while, they'll go, oh, damn. Maybe I should stop doing that. I'm wasting my yeah. time. And plus, IG will ban them, too, their IP address, where they can't even sign up an account. So, yeah, block report. You know, um, it, again, it's like when I see shit like that, it just the times that we're at right now, it's just like, come on, man. Like, let me ask some else. Let me ask some else. I, I, a lot of my followers here and the people here, they are a lot of people in business. And I keep getting a lot of that. I wouldn't have made any money until I found Forex trading something, 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 a lot of those robots like that. Yeah. What, what are you doing that? I mean, how do, how do people even do that? How do they buy robots and set them? I'm just really curious about that because I want people here to know how, uh, you know, how, yeah, how this is happening. What, how do people get robots like that? And what yeah, is the so process? Again, there's some smart people out there. And I think if they use themselves, there's, it, it's just like, a, you know, the, the highest drug dealer, right? That's a smart dude. He's running a big corporation. If he put those smarts over at Apple, he'd be running shit, right? So yeah. it's the same thing with these bots, guys, is they build a program until it gets shut down. You know? Really? It, 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 they build this program, they'll just let it run until it gets shut down. So that's what it is. It's just a bot. It just runs, and it runs off people's hashtags. So if you do a certain hashtag, or if you say a certain thing, it'll come on there and just put that thing on. It just, I mean, look at all the, uh, look who all, uh, at all the big pages, you know, you get them too, but the big pages it says Forex or don't look at my profile. You, uh, I see, it, you know, stuff like that. So it's just a program. It gets shut down. I mean, not, not something I ever believed in doing. So. Right. All right. So I got another question here. So I was sharing with people the other day. I said, you know, you looked at 90, 90 agents from CAA got fired and 250 yeah. um, people from CAA got furloughed. That means that there is an everybody here with a product, a service, a content, or whoever, whatever they do, that means there is approximately 250, 250 people in Hollywood before you talk about any other agents that got shut down. 
250 people in Hollywood with massive Rolodexes of stars, celebrities, athletes, entertainers, actors, all that kind of stuff who don't have any work now and they, and they have, you know, Rolodexes. I'm using, I'm dating myself, Rolodexes, but contact, <laughs> contact, these, right? people are, these people are going, what do you mean about Rolodexes? Explain context, yourself. right? Now on the flip side, you have all these actors, actresses, uh, not athletes, because some of them are some of them are playing, but mu music artists who can't go on Broadway, they can't go on tour, they can't make any money, and we all know that a lot of these music artists are uh, they're living beyond their means. So if they were making five million dollars a year on tour and they were already in debt, they're making zero right now. How do you? utilize because this is, seems like what you did at an early stage when things were going great so now i know you're just like really racking it in how do you basically raking it in how do you basically say listen let me contact all these people who can who can get paid by because they can eat what they kill and they all have the contacts to all these people who are not making any money right now and get my product or my startup or my services out to them and cut them a little piece and we all live how how, how do people go about doing that because i know you're an expert in doing that in contacting the people or the agents to the to the artists or whoever it is to utilize and make it a, make it a win win for everybody. Yeah. Like you know, what what are other ways that you think you can do that? Do they DM them first? Do they go out? Like how do they do that? Of course. So if you have, it, it's kind of it's pretty simple, right? Is you need to engage social media. The reason why it's called social media is to be social. And I've gotten a lot of contacts with brands and uh, celebrities and uh, athletes and stuff by engaging, by really engaging in what they in what they have to say. And what I mean by that is, so say there's an agent. I guarantee that agent doesn't have 50 million followers. I guarantee that agent's on LinkedIn. Engage, find them. Engage with them on their post to where it doesn't seem like, another DM, hey, I have an opportunity for you. Well, fuck, everybody has an opportunity, right? So right. the key is to engage, to really feel about, you know, to talk to them, you know, if they post something, engage exactly to what the post is, you know, like you really care. Get a feeling to where they're seeing you, they're seeing you, and then come up to them and say, you know what, I might have an opportunity. Can I shoot you a DM? Of course you can, go ahead. So the key is remembering social media is to be social, not just to sit there and say, hey, check your DM, check your DM. Check I, I, like what, I like what the, on the, the story time box said. Yep, showing a genuine interest makes a difference. Yep. And I can't tell you how many times I may have posted something where, let's say it was my anniversary to my wife, or let's say I was, I, I, I literally have done this. I've, I've been saying rest in peace to somebody who just passed. And in the comments, somebody's like, check your DM. I got, I got a way you can make money. I'm like, I will never exactly. deal with that person because of what they just said during <laughs> this time of grievance. Or during this time, hey, happy birthday to my daughter, Minka. Yo, you want to make some real money? Yeah. No, I want to wish happy birthday to my daughter, Minka. That's what I wanted to do. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, so, so yeah, I think it, yeah, I think it could be it could be it could be hurtful if you try to engage in the wrong way. You don't have authenticity. And and that's what it is. Is right now it's you need to be authentic. And like I said, is you know um, you don't always have to show your face. You don't always have to you know talk about your brand. You just gotta be authentic. I mean, if you're if you're going for a walk because you feel overweight, go do it. Maybe maybe you'll help somebody else by posting that. Right. So. It's just all authenticity. You know, right now is a hard time for everybody, right? But it's also a great time for everybody. And I hate to say it. I hate to say anything great about this time. Right. But if, if you have $10, you can get a GoDaddy domain. You can get a Shopify for free. I mean, for 14 days, I think it is. Damon, is that 14 days yeah. Shopify? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yep. So a domain for 10 bucks, a Shopify page for uh, free for 14 days. I mean, you can and literally learn everything you need to learn to build an online business on YouTube. So it's just like, you know, with yourself, with FUBU, 
you didn't invent the t-shirt. I'll never forget when you told me this. You're like, I didn't invent the t-shirt. <laughs> right. I invented the t-shirt during the times, right? It's just like, you know, and, uh, it, it's just, you know, I, I go back to talking about 5-4 and Menlo and stuff, but they didn't invent clothes. They just invented it. Uh, they just made it easier for guys to get it. So right. it's just like, there's so much opportunity out there. And I'm not saying go out there, fucking sell masks. That's not an opportunity. You know, you, that's helping people, yes. But there's so much opportunity. And people say, well, drop shipping's dead. Amazon's the biggest drop shipper in the world. And you guys are making them billions. They don't own shit. That's drop shipping. That's true. That's true. And last but not least, uh, you know, it, it just goes back to what I opened up the conversation with John. I'm just curious. I'm going to start asking people this. Did you sell anything at all as a, ch as a kid in school? Actually, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I sold pencils. And I remember. Oh, like me. Yeah. No, but listen to this. Yeah, I didn't get beat up by. I remember that story. Uh, what was it? Uh, I started I trying to sell the pencils to the boys. They beat me up. So I ended up selling them to the girls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. So um, they used to have these NFL pencils, right? This isn't an NFL. This is Monte Carlo. But they used to have uh, pencils with NFL teams on them. And so I remember I used to grab a packet of them, and I think it came with like 15 packet, 15 for like a dollar or something like that. And I would sell them for a quarter a pencil. And just like to be in the – and all, all my friends loved it. they give me a quarter. they get their favorite team and right away, you know, but – and you know what? I think, I think that's going to be my new thing. Tell your kid to sell stuff in school. Now, I wonder why do people... Why hey, some, kids, some kids do sell their stuff in school and they get <laughs> the wrong stuff. Yeah, but no. <laughs> I ain't talking about that. But why do they get in trouble for selling stuff in school? Because I just thought about it. The schools love to pimp out our children to go sell candy bars on the street to the creepy looking guys going door by door and selling raffle tickets and selling everything else. But why do they penalize our kids for selling good stuff, whether it's Pokemon cards, whether it's sports cards, why do they penalize our kids for selling it in school? But yet in school, you got to sell everything to raise money for the, yep. the team, the team's, um, the team's uh, 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 uniforms, Jersey. you got to sell yeah. raffle. Then when you go to the Girl Scouts, you got to stand out in front of stores and sell cookies, but then you get penalized for the system is against us, Rob. I'm telling you, man, it, fight it, the system. If I can't yeah, fight the system, yeah, hey, I'm telling you, it's like, you know, one of, uh, we talk about this a lot, a lot, you know, you definitely do need education, uh, because I wouldn't know how to read or write, you know, uh, without early stages of education. But a lot of things that I learned, Damon, honestly, was on the fly, you know, in, in the trenches, um, YouTube, I mean, there's so many opportunities to learn it. I mean, do I like the school system? I think when you're 18 and you don't know where, what you're going to do and your life is just all over the fucking place, it might help because you're just not grown up yet. But there's so much opportunity to learn certain things. I mean, yeah, if you're going to be a doctor, go to school, please. Right? Yeah, please. <laughs> if you're going to do that, yeah, I don't want you fixing my broken leg, you know, from YouTube. Right? But, you know, I think there's so much opportunity for people to – uh, to start an e-commerce business, to start uh, a, a shoe business, to start a t-shirt business, a hat business. So, especially the young kids, with all these kids being so digital, I mean, I, I think they need to start pushing that more in school. Absolutely. I think everybody in here said, after I said that, they said the school just ain't getting their slice of the pie. Yeah. Or, you know what I mean? But, but it's all good. So thank you, Rob, man, as yeah. always. Hey, Jamie, I, yeah. I got a question yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah. So... And I know you you ask questions towards everybody, but I wanted to get your opinion on something. Sure. So what would you tell 26-years-old or 21-year-old Damon John right now in this time? Like, I, I, I don't know, maybe you're in college, maybe you're not in college. What would you, what would you tell 21-year-old Damon John right now? I would say, Damon, you know, what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? I would say that I can guarantee you, Damon, that this is going to happen again sooner or later in one way or another. And where you're at now, are you happy? And if you're not happy, have you put down the fundamentals and the bricks and or the things you needed to do to create change for the rest of your life? Because at 25 years old, you've got your entire life ahead of you. 
hopefully, Damon, you don't have, uh, you know, you didn't, you were smart enough to, to protect yourself and not, and not have another child, uh, not have a child at the time. Um, you should be tied. You should be, you should not be all over the place. You should, maybe you have a love interest, but you should be focused and be obsessed with finding out who you are right now. And what are you want going to do, Damon? Are you going to, you know, because, and I say this to everybody. And just like I said to my daughters up until the age of 20, you're going to be somebody's child. I want you all to live to 100 years old. So if you're somebody's child up until 20 years old, you're going to be somebody's husband, wife, father or mother, grandmother, grandfather. Are you going to, what are you going to do for 10 years at least from 20 to 30 to just be yourself? You don't know who you are yet. You really don't. So what are your assets? What are your liabilities? How can you keep some kind of day job and how can you put down and educate yourself and put down the 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 seeds that are going to grow to create the rest of your life right and do not get locked up with anybody and i i think that hit me right around 15 years ago i saw a guy that we we went to high school together i never really saw him after that and he was like yeah well I decided because the movie Cocktail had came out with Tom Cruise years ago and he was slipping the bottles. And I guess today you'll call it a mixologist, whatever you call these dark people, <laughs> Quit right? Quit dating yourself, man. Right, right. And he was like, he was like, and he had a big business, this guy. And I said, well, how'd you do it? You went for finance? You went for this? He said, no, no, no. I realized I needed to get out of Hollis, Queens. I wanted to travel and see the world, but I didn't have any money. So I became, I went to bartending school. It took me like six months. I went to bartending school and I started to travel the world as a bartender. What I did was... I would work for, he worked for the Four Seasons or one of them. He said, I would travel with the weather. I would go to Australia. Then I would go to Hawaii. I spent six months, six months. I would travel with the weather. And he said, and the people that stayed in the Four Seasons or whatever the, the brand of that hotel was, just like I do, they, they frequented those hotels when they went into those cities. And he said, I did that for 20 years. And those guys would sit at my bar and those women would sit at my bar, those businessmen, I would get advice from them all the time. I would listen to their problems. I was their shrink. And he said, then I decided to raise, I, I decided to come up with a company, an idea, and I raised $20 million off, off of the edge of my bar. And he said, so check this out, Damon. I never went to college, but from 18 to 35, I surfed the best, best surfs. I dated, you know, what I wanted to do. I stayed in shape. I lived in the best countries. And all I was doing was being a bartender. And then I got mentored at the same time while I was pouring drinks. And then I was there for everybody's problems. And I got $20 million worth of funding when I decided that I didn't want to do that anymore. Now I got a lovely family and a big ass company. I love that. And, and you know, and, and we're sitting here overthinking it. How do I yeah. get into Harvard? You know, and, and this dude is living his best life, you know? Yeah. So, you know, so, so the, so the, the twenty, the twenty-something year old Damon John, I just gotta, you know, I, 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 I gotta look at myself and see where my opportunities are that I can get into and not lock myself over with anybody and get to know who I want to be up until thirty, thirty-five, or forty, and then, 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 you know, then hopefully I would have already paid the bills by the day job and I and my investment would have grown, and then I decide I don't know if I want to bring somebody else in my life. Yeah, and that's and that's exactly it is. Um... You know, be, I know we got to get going and stuff, but I, I think I'd like to let, end this off on a, a good note is, you know, when I first met Damon uh, about 10 years ago, and, you know, dude, this is props to you, man. You let me in your office. Me and Brandon went down there. We were talking to you about some stuff. But I'll never forget when I left that office what you said. And you told me, you said, there's never any traffic on the extra mile. And... I never really started thinking about that until I really started pinpointing on where I was going to go. And what I started to do within making, you know, dealing with all these brands and dealing with, you know, all these athletes that I do right now, I never forget there's never any traffic on the extra mile that you told me. So I always make one more call. Yeah. I always do one more text. I always do one more email. And I kept you on here for one more minute. So, <laughs> no, and I'm serious. It's, I get it's, it. It, it. It's just that little piece of advice. And one of the other things is when I wake up every morning, no matter, and I've been broke, D, we've talked about this. I've been broke. You've been broke. One thing that I, you know, that I've done that has changed my attitude and the way I feel is I wake up 
and I literally tell myself that I am a good person, you know, that, that I'm a good businessman, that I'm a good friend, that no, I'm a good and, and that you deserve it. A lot of people don't think that they deserve what they have or that if they do any better and they get any better, that they deserve it because somebody right. for some reason said having money is bad or you don't deserve it or why not me? How come you? And they made them feel guilty of their success. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. So, you know, D, like I said, is you, you, uh, you give me a lot of knowledge. You don't even know. I mean, I know we text every once in a while. I know you're busy. I'm busy and stuff. But, you know, I, I just think right now is a good time. You know, people really need to focus, uh, reach out to myself. I'll answer any questions, you know, uh, talk on Damon's post. When he posts stuff, ask him questions. He does reply. Might not reply that day, but, you know, he's filming Shark Tank right now. He's got a lot of stuff. But I mean, don't be afraid to reach out and, and, and ask for help, ask, you know, to talk to somebody. I mean, I imagine you ask for help from people. I mean, Absolutely. All the time. Yeah. I'm still seeking out mentors. And yeah. listen, I'm, I'm asking for help from you guys, from you and John, because, uh, you know, people can hear me ramble all the time. And after you heard the damn FUBU in the house uh, uh, story a hundred times, okay, Damon, tell me something else. And that's why I bring other people on to give yeah. you other insights at the same things that I'm saying, but in a, but another person doing it in another different way. Because you know, if you heard my story already, you heard it enough. All right, yeah, shut the hell up, Damon. Let me hear it from somebody else yeah. that you respect. So all yeah. the best, man. Yeah, you too, bro. And uh, thank you for having me on. Like I said, is if anybody needs uh, have any questions, shoot me a DM, whatever. Reply on Damon's thing. Um, you know, this isn't a plug towards Damon, but his last book, like literally. If you want a power shift, just think of that. You don't even have to read it. Just think of power shift. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, just think yeah, of Yeah, no, I get it. Shift, right? Yeah, read it by its cover. Yeah, that's it. All right, Rob. Love you, brother. Talk to All you later. Right. All right, All right I'm you in. Later. What's up? Now, this is Shark Damon John here, and if you're already here, I already know you're dedicated to bettering yourself and learning as much as you can. To learn even more, subscribe to my channel and make sure that you don't miss any of these valuable videos. And I will see you next time.